out of jail, Sam. Now, ain't that a nice remark to make to a jet? Don't be so uppy. I read in the paper where you and Johnny Fletcher and the DA were keeping steady company. Oh, we as innocent as babies. We have nothing to do with it. Well, how come the cops toss you in the middle of that murder ring? It all started on a thing like that. A friend's key. Johnny Fletcher figured that we're going to get one of these keys in our lock any day, so we decided to go to work selling books on uh, strength and health. Well, I'm doing a modeling, and uh, Johnny's doing a stealing when the cops break up our play and we get lost from each other. Ah, Mr. Fletcher. I've been waiting up for you. Mr. Peabody, I'm glad you have. Somebody put a French key in my lock. I'm sure it was a mistake. Hey, no mistake. There's a little matter of three weeks back rent. Of course, if you're able to pay, I shall be glad to have the key removed. Otherwise, I know. I, I underestimated you. I thought I could store you for four weeks. <laughs> Three is still the limit. <laughs> well, shall we go now? Thank you. You give me $36.45 and you can have your luggage. You give me $36.25 and you can keep the luggage. You couldn't recommend a comfortable park bench with running water, could you? Good night, Fletcher. from the other side either? No. Hey, Johnny. I think you better come in. There's a guy in here. Who is he? I don't know. He's dead. Got a gold piece. How do you like that? Knocking off a guy for five bucks. Uh uh, that isn't the reason. Gold money is illegal. Then give it back to him. Let's get out of here. Got it. It's the girl who lives there. Mmm, not bad. She's going there. Now, how are we going to get out? I don't know. We gotta get out somehow. I've got it. Step aside. I'm going right through that door. Hey, what's the idea? What do you want to do? Bring the house detective up here? Then we would be in a jam. What do you think we're in now? Look, we left here at six o'clock. You re-entered about ten. Now somewhere between six and ten, Peabody came in here to put the French key in our lock. If our friend had been here, Peabody would have seen it. You mean this fellow came in here after the door was plugged? Of course. But that ain't reasonable. Nobody could have boosted him across those windows like this. He was way over 200 pounds. Then he came in under his own power and was murdered here. How'd they get into room 819 to come over? With a skeleton key, the same way we did. Maybe he come down from room 921 on a rope or something. Maybe Peabody did it when he locked the door. Peabody? And leave all that gold behind? Let's get out of here and leave everything behind. Be calling us. Don't. We ain't supposed to be in here. <clears throat> yes? Get out of that room. The 
Did you hear what the man said? Let's get out of here. The lights out. Let's try it. Okay. I've got a gun. Boy, I like it. It isn't safe. That's your worry. You're not coming in here. I've got to. Look, this is no place to argue. You don't understand. I understand, all right. Another inch and I shoot. I really will. your little pistol didn't have any captain? Yes. Say, what is this? Hollywood and Vine? This is my friend, Mr. Craig. Pleased to meet you. Hello and goodbye. Now get out, both of you. Or is the other man on his way? What other man? The one on the bed. Isn't he coming too? No, he ain't coming too. He's dead. He's been murdered. Oh, we didn't do it. We don't know who he is or where he came from. And we lived in that room for three weeks. Yes, I, I know. I've seen you around. Remember what the man said? Just think, all this time so near, and, and now we meet just as I have to leave. It's ironic. It's murder, come on! Well, but, but why didn't you go out to your own room? Oh, we can't. The manager put a French key in our lock. French key? Yes, when you owe three weeks' rent, and the manager wants to lock you out, but he wants to make sure you don't sneak back and steal your own luggage. He takes a French key, which is made of soft metal, puts it in the lock, and breaks it off. Then you try to get back into the room. You can't do it. Can't do that after three weeks? In this hotel, when's your time up? Four days ago. And Mr. Peabody hasn't locked you out yet? I can't understand it. I can. We're being paid. Come on. Yes, get up. Hey, I, I wonder who could have tipped off the police. Well, my name's Johnny Fletcher. What's yours? Dennis Morgan. Why? Because you're very lovely. And because I'm going to see a lot of you. You're going to see a lot of cops if we don't get out of here in a hurry. Yes, hurry, please. You've been very kind. Good night. Good night. Oh, wait a minute. Put this under your pillow. Sweet dreams. Nothing very flattering, but the girl's in show business, temporarily out of work, at liberty like us. Yeah, liberty. What about the cops? Oh, personally, I don't think they're so smart. After all, if we were a couple of cops looking for a couple of guys that have been locked out of their room, where would we be looking now? Let's see, uh, the public library? Uh-uh, the Union Station. Yeah, you're right. Johnny, you're in the Union Station. That's what I mean. Hurry up. <laughs> Let's go. I'm right behind you. We're safe. I wonder if the cops know anything. Well, whatever they know, they haven't told the papers. Our only chance is to move fast. You mean outrun them? Keep ahead of them. Before they start asking questions, we got to find out some answers. But how do we start? This is our only lead. The go piece. We gotta find a new mismatch. Would an old one be cheaper? A what? An old uh, mismatch. What is a mismatch? A new mismatch is an old coin dealer. Oh. Uh, here we are. Horatio Vedder. New mismatch. Mr. Anderson says you have a five dollar gold piece marked 1822. May I see it? Too light. Probably. 
And the date's been struck over. This is really an 1812 piece. I wouldn't be at all surprised. However, I'll, uh, I'll give you $20 for it. If that's an 1822 gold piece, it's the most valuable American coin. You a collector? Well, sure, he's an old new Mr. Yeah, he's a collector. Yes, I just started. You happen to know George Poulton? Poulton's poultry products? No. He has a rather large gold collection. Does this happen to be his coin? No, it's mine. I see. What do you think it's worth? Mm. $5,000? <laughs> <laughs> he's only kidding, mister. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 10000 would be more like it. Well, if it's genuine, it's worth it. But I must examine it more closely. You leave it and call back tomorrow. I'll phone you. But I must examine it. I... Well, I'll advance you $500. You leave the coin. Thanks. I'll phone. Ten thousand bucks. Give him a break. Sell for half and let's go town. He's on the phone. We better get lost fast. So Johnny figured that by this time we're as hot as a two-dollar pistol. The cops are anxious to get their hands on us. So naturally, we've got to move to an address they don't expect. With a couple bucks invested in paper luggage and another 50 cents for travel labels to make us look like uh, jets of social standing, we move to the Barbasol Wilshire, no less. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, I'd like a small suite for myself and ma'am. Bedroom, sitting room adjoining? That would be jolly. But I'd prefer something, you know, high up. Away from the street noises and the bother and all. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I can give you a lovely suite on the 12th floor at $30 per day. Oh, $30? That would be seven pounds ten. Right? Quite right. There you are, sir. B12. Can I unpack for you, sir? Oh, no, 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 don't bother. My man will attend there, thank you. And, uh, this is your trouble, son. Thank you. Johnny, what I do with these bricks? Put them back, lock them up, and stash them. I say, operator, do you think you could connect me with a little hotel called the Eagle? You've got a nerve. Have you seen the morning papers? Yes, and I still want to see you. I thought about you all last night. I hardly got my eyes closed. Yeah, me neither. How about meeting me at the cocktail lounge at the Barbizon Wiltshire at uh, 3 o'clock? It's a date. I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye, darling. There's a fascinating young woman. I wish I knew what she knows. There are angles there. You mean curves, don't you? Oh, come, come, my good man. What now, kind sir? Follow me. For now, we sally forth to further establish our credit at this hostelry. The dining room, the barber shop, and then the haberdashery at home. Carry on, your lordship. Carry home. Your eyes open. For detectives, huh? Yeah, if you spot a dick, come and tip me off. Okay. Janet, darling, am I glad to see you. Why I came, I don't know. Maybe for a laugh. I certainly need one. Well, I'm here to fill the order. Yes, sir. What will it be? Well, now, that's service. Bourbon highball? Mm -hmm. I'll make it a pair. Yes, sir. I'll make them double. You don't do things by halves, do you? You want to get loaded? Uh, loaded? Oh, that reminds me. What's the idea? It's all right. I, I just wanted to make sure you didn't have your cap pistol with you. You know, you're a very dangerous gal. Dangerous? <laughs> you should have seen me when the police got through. Oh, did they give you a very tough time? Oh, it could have been worse. <laughs> I talked so much they were glad to have me shut up. Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't. What do they really know? Well, they haven't identified the man. They claim he's a gold miner. Something about dirt and dust on his clothes. Says the man came from Nevada. Hmm. You know, they're awfully good at that sort of thing. Tell me, who do you really think killed him? You. 
thanks. No, last night I wasn't sure, but... You couldn't kill a man. You're not the type. Well, now, don't be too sure about that. Happy days ahead. I'll go for that. Hey, that room above mine, 921. Well, they checked on that. It was occupied last night by a local citizen. A man named uh, Vickers, or Vittis. Vitter. Horatio Vitter. Yeah, how did you know? Oh, I know a lot of things. But they're all in little pieces, Mike. I can't get them together. But this Vitter, didn't the police think it strange that a resident should be staying overnight in a broken down fly trap like the Hotel Eagle? He claims he does it frequently. He lives in San Fernando, and when he works late, he stays in town at the hotel. Now what I'd like to know is, why hasn't Peabody thrown you out? <laughs> well, I have a promise of a job at Denton Freeman's new nightclub. He knows that. That could make a difference. I hope you get your job. So do I. If I don't, I'll get the French key, too. <laughs> that man is here. The dick? Yeah. You'll have to pardon me. Of course. Be careful. I've seen him before. I know he's a dick. Yeah, he's a dick, all right. Did I tell you? Dick Arlen. You've seen him in pictures. Oh, yeah. Now Janet's gone. Oh, you've been a great help. Winslow expressed surprise that Tam should be in Los Angeles. Never in the 30 years that he'd been caretaker of the mine had he ever left it, the financier declared. <laughs> then what made him think that the miner at the Eagle Hotel was his man? Winslow told the police that the combination of the dead man being a miner and hailing from Nevada made him curious. So he took a chance, ran down to the morgue, and sure enough, it was Billy Tam. Trouble with these cops is they're too polite for men like Winslow. But I'm not afraid of him. I'd like to ask him some questions. Johnny, every time you play detective, we're always getting into trouble. But we can't help ourselves. No, no, Johnny. All right. You stay here. I'm going out. I'll not budge from this couch. Johnny, wait for me. You go ahead, I'll be right with you. Don't be long. Come on, George. Hello. Hello. I'm Betty Winslow. You're from Dad's office? From the office. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm Johnny Fletcher, and this is Sam Craig. Pleased to meet you. Have a drink? Thank you. We'd like to. Are we late? No, you're early. Thank you. Mmm, nice that juice. I see the mama bear and the baby bear. Where's Goldilocks and the papa bear? I'm Goldilocks. Papa bear's inside the house. Excuse me. Of course. Why ain't you that strength of character like me? Oh, you're strong, I suppose. Strong as a bull. Mm. Party's outside. Yes, I know, but I'm not with the party. I'm here to see Mr. Winslow. Oh? He's having a business conference. I'm Taylor, his confidential secretary. I uh, don't recall seeing you. I don't recall either. Thank you. Pardon me. Speak of the devil. What's the idea? Well, this is the man we've just been talking about. Johnny Fletcher? In person. You're Mr. Winslow. Who are these other gentlemen? Oh, Mr. Vetter? Hi, pal. Mr. Holderman? Mr. Fulton. Fulton's poultry product. Is this the man with the hat eagle? That I am. I paid $10,000 for that. It doesn't belong to me. Uh, let me see it. I don't happen to have it at the moment. That coin belongs to me. Billy Tam was my employee. He came to Los Angeles to see me and... I thought he came to visit Mr. Horatio Vedder. He was supposed to call on me, but he didn't show up. To see you. Well, that's gratitude for you. I paid the man a salary for 30 years for doing nothing and then... Pardon me. But why did you pay him a salary for 30 years if he did something? Well, he was supposed to look after things. I always thought I might reopen the mine. Plenty of gold in it, yes. 
What I don't understand, Walter, is how an ignorant desert rat got a hold of such a valuable coin. Well, it seems I knew very little of Billy Tam. But that's beside the point. Tam was my employee. He probably picked up this coin on my property. Since he had no relatives... And you figure the coin belongs to you. Well, he couldn't have just picked it up because the coin was found in mint condition. Mint condition? Yes, sir. Yes, never been in circulation. This coin couldn't have just been lying around on the ground. Well, I don't know anything about that. All I know is the coin belongs to me. And if you're fool enough to want to pay 10000 for it, it's a deal. You gentlemen are forgetting something. Tam was murdered. The police are going to have something to say about the coin and about Fletcher. That's right. The man's body was found in his room. It's obvious. Obvious nothing. You occupied the room above mine. Do you deny it? No. Well, a uh, rope could be let down from a window. Don't be ridiculous. If I'd killed him, would I have let the coin remain in his hand? Oh, say, you, you've got a point there. Strong as a bull. And twice as smart. Thanks. What hand? Of this horseplay. You admit you took the coin out of Tam's hand? I do. All right, so the police are looking for you. Huh. Now, give me that coin or... Oh, now, wait a minute. This is where I came in. What? Yes, sir. <laughs> we're in a hurry. Sam. Yeah? Listen to this. Denton Freeman. Signs unknown for lead in new floor show. Guess who? Who? Janet Morgan. Well, she's a nice kid. I'm glad she got a break. Yeah, but this calls for a singer, and I thought she was a dancer. If she can dance, she can sing. For my dough, she don't even have to dance. Not with her look. <laughs> Sam, I got a little job for you to do for me today. Yeah. I want you to go check on our old landlord, Mr. Peabody. Are you crazy? Why, the minute I walk into the Eagle Hotel... You don't have to go to the hotel. Your pal, Eddie Miller, the bell captain, doesn't go on until 12 o'clock. You go to Corey's pool room, you'll probably find him playing Kelly Pool. And you know he hates Peabody's face. Then what are you going to do in the meantime? Nothing. Then be careful. What do you mean, checking out of your hotel without leaving a forwarding address? Well, I'm getting up in the world. Yes. So I read in the paper. And I came around to congratulate you. Thank you. Tell me, how did you land this job? <laughs> Through an audition. You want to make something of it? Who, me? I should throw stones. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, how are you and the cops getting along? Well, they haven't caught up with me yet. As a matter of fact, things are sort of uh, status quo. And I am in the dough. <laughs> You're terrific. The night before last, you were thrown out of a hotel for non-payment of rent. The next day, you're at the Barbers and Wilshire, no less. And today... I am hoping to invite you to dinner at your apartment. <laughs> you talked me into it. Miss Morgan, we're ready for your number. Oh, pick me up at 5.30. I'll be waiting. Walter Winslow, please. Do you have an appointment? Is Mr. Winslow the sort of person who sees people without an appointment? No. Well, then. Well, you waiting to see me? Oh, why not? Sit in the office. Thank you. Sit down. So you've decided to change your mind, huh? What about? Turning over the $5 gold piece? Oh, not until I know more about this business. You know, there are a lot of crazy people mixed up in this. If you're referring to Winslow, those coin collectors were badgering him last night. I'm referring to all of you. You're hardly in a position to criticize, Fletcher. All I have to do is pick up that phone and, and call the police. Yes, I know, but you're not going to do that until you've seen my gold piece. That's why I'm hanging on to it. I'm not sure just what you're after in this business. Being the chief murder suspect, all I'm after is to find a way to clear myself. And that's to find out who killed Billy Tam and why. Well, if you are innocent, I'd be glad to help you in any way I could, but I can't. You can help me, Mr. Holderman, because not only are you the vice president of this firm, 
But you're Mr. Winslow's brother-in-law. That's true. And you're in a position to know a lot about Mr. Winslow. How long has he known Mr. Polson? Polson? Oh, the chicken remedy man. Well, he never met him till last night. Better brought him up. Was he acquainted with Better? No. But when Better read in the paper about Walter having identified Tam, he rushed out with Polson. Oh. oh, hello, Mr. Winslow. Hello. Will you leave us alone a minute, John? I want to talk to this man. Certainly, Walter. Sorry, I'm afraid I wasn't much help, Fletcher. Oh, if you were. I want a straight answer. Did you kill Billy Tam? No, not even once. Fletcher, I'm a man who believes in hunches. I've been thinking about you. Yes, and I've been thinking a lot about you, too. My experience has been that most private detectives are without imagination. That's what I like about you, your imagination. And I need a private detective. Interested? Depends. What's the job? To find a bear. Oh, a bear. Uh, have you tried the zoo? <laughs> I had three iron bears on my lawn in Beverly Hill. One of them was stolen last night. Yes, I saw them. I don't know why anyone would want to steal one of those atrocities. Well, they may be atrocities to some people, but I like them. And I want it returned. For me, it had a very strong sentimental value. What has it got for me? I'll pay you $100 a day with a limit of five days. And a bonus of $500 when you find a bear. And here's an advance. Uh, which one of the bears is missing? One of the two smaller ones. Hmm. Is it hollow or solid? Why? Well, the weight will make a difference if I find them, try to carry them back. Mm -hmm. You couldn't carry it, if that's what you mean. Mr. Winslow, you've hired yourself a bear hunter. You know very well what he's looking for. A five dollar gold piece. <laughs> if he finds it, I'll split it with him. You're pretty smart, Fletcher, but you can save yourself a lot of trouble by making a statement. Your friend Craig's already made one. Sam signed one? He did sign one. <laughs> I don't believe it. He never signs anything without first consulting counsel. Several people have seen that gold coin. Have you seen it? Until you've seen it, it's hearsay. Oh, now let's not start spouting law. All right, you carry the ball. Okay, I will. We traced Ham's movements pretty closely. He got in the Union Station at 632. He had a sandwich at the drugstore on the corner, leaving there at approximately 6 .50. Uh, Well, at that time, Sam and I were enjoying a triple bill at Grindhouse on Western Avenue. That's your story. You don't believe it? No, I don't believe it. Now, let's have the truth. All right. I'll talk. Good. Take this down. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Fletcher. But it's my duty to warn you, anything you say can be used against you. Yeah, I know. I know. Sam and I were hungry. It was a choice of starvation or work. And Sam and I don't like to work. We were sitting in the lobby. And in comes this miner, Billy Tan. So I gotta tell the story my own way. Can he be the miner? Yeah, yeah you be the miner. <clears throat> we were sitting in the... Not yet. Look. <coughs> we were sitting in the lobby. And in comes this miner. I look at him and I see he's so poor. I know he's rich and loaded with pay dirt. So we follow him around the lobby. But Sam had nothing to do with this. Get this down. I am the one. Sam is as innocent as a baby. I'm the one. I'm the one that coaxed him into the alley. This is pretty rough. Coaxed there, fellas. So I pushed him and I punched him. Hey, then I stared him seven or eight times. Right, he said. Yeah. And I had the body on my hands and I didn't know what to do with it. So I 
threw it over my shoulder, and I make to the door. Oh, no, you don't. You see, I'm trapped. See, am I going too fast for you? I can take it. Yeah, but I can't. I'm sorry, old chap. But I didn't know what to do. I see an opening. I rush into it, but I'm up against a brick wall. In my room, eight stories above. How do I get rid of the body? I run right up the wall, into the window. Throw the body on the floor. No, on the bed. You ran right up the wall. That's right. Take this down. I used to be a human fly. Will you lock him up? Come on. A night in the bullpen will cool you off. Well, you said you wanted the truth. Thank you. Johnny! <laughs> nice company you keep here. Yeah, that's Al Deganis. We'd like a little privacy, please. Get out of here. <laughs> what did you tell the cop? Nothing. Huh? I may believe I was deaf, and Johnny today put up a holler. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when I sent you to see Eddie Miller at the pool room, did you get anything? Yeah, seven bucks. No. What did you find out about Peabody? He was soft on the Morgan girl, all right. He let her check out without paying the back rent. Then she really did owe some dough. Yeah, he never really called her. But she was the exception, the only one. And Billy Tam, was he registered in the hotel? You didn't tell me to ask about that. I didn't tell you to play Kelly Pool either, but you did. Well, I can't remember everything. And, uh, if you're so smart, how come you're in here? Well, you got something there. I'm turning you two guys loose, but don't try to leave town. Either we're free or we're not free. Make up your mind. Yeah. Peabody admitted he locked you out of your room at 6 o'clock. But we had a tip you got in afterwards. Oh, really? Oh, get out of here. It'll be a pleasure. Come on. Hey. Tell those guys, Foxy. Don't let them see you. Foxy. Oh, hello. Looking for somebody? Oh, no, no. Uh -uh. Well, then go right ahead. Yeah. No. No, why should I? You go ahead. I'm supposed to be following you. Oh. You like this better? Fine, thank you, yes. Say, look, we're going to grab a cab and go up to Beverly Hills. Would you like to come along with us and split expenses? No, I don't think so. Save the taxpayers money. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Taxi. Barbizon Wilshire. Hey, Foxy, give us a break. Who tipped Madigan off that we were living at the Barbizon Wilshire? Wouldn't you like to know? Was it a girl? I ain't talking. That's a very snappy comeback. But whoever it was was the murderer of Billy Tan. That's what you said. Hey, how do you come to be on the police force anyway? You know, you don't look the type. That's just why I'm on the force. Nobody suspects me. But I never find out anything. Hey, what do the papers say about us? Uh, the story's on page three today. No new developments. Hey, look. Hmm? Telephone collector. Slugged and robbed. Hey, that's very interesting. Ah, oh, the telephone company can afford it. Hey, Sam, should we let him find out something? Sure, he's a good kid. Were you there in the hotel when, when Madigan picked me up yesterday? Yeah, I was there. You were coming out of a telephone booth. Who was I talking to? I didn't hear the door was closed. Nah, I wasn't talking to anybody. Then what were you doing in there? Well, I knew you fellas were going to pick me up, and I had something in my pocket I didn't want you to find. A five-dollar gold piece. Catch? You dropped the gold piece in the telephone. Bingo. Well, I'm a monkey's uncle. I wouldn't be at all surprised. <clears throat> My key, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Fisher Cartwell, but we'll have to take over your room. And why, may I ask? I think that should be quite obvious. The uh, cobblestones in your bags. Oh, but I like cobblestones. Perhaps I'm a cobblestone maker. Perhaps they're my samples. If I like carrying cobblestones around, that's my business. Your business is renting rooms. Do you ask other guests who come in here to pay in advance? No, but... And once they have registered, do you search their luggage? Certainly not. But you can't possibly pay for that suite. How do you know I can't pay for it? You have a house rule to submit a bill at the end of the week. Any time I refuse to pay you will be plenty of time for you to make a legal protest. Will you leave quietly or shall I summon the police? Oh, you'll summon the police. Who do you think this is? Scotland Yard? I anticipated this kind of impertinence. 
That's why I brought my friend, Detective Fox, along. You know about these things, don't you, Mr. Fox? I know that they... Tell him that unless he gives me my key immediately... There'll be trouble. Yes, thank you, old chap. I shall commend you to your mayor. And once this hotel hears about this, you'll be lucky if you don't lose your position. Now my key, please. Thank you. We might even sue you. Yes. Hey, how did I get mixed up in this? I'm tired of these people who treat me like a hoodlum. Yes, and the same thing goes for you. Me? I didn't say anything. By your actions, you do. I do? Yes, and just for that, you can't follow me anymore. How am I going to keep an eye on you? Keep an eye on Sam. Going up? Yeah! Hey, hey, wait, 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 hey, you can't do this to me. Now, wait a minute, you're not going to get away with it. Johnny Fletcher. Hiya, oh. pal. Oh, hey, what is this, a pinch? Relax. Well, you didn't yourself, Johnny. We've been looking all over for you. I just Mom. left your friend up there. Get in. Well, we've got a few things you want to talk over. You know, for a minute, I thought you were detectives. <laughs> Why? Oh, oh, no hard feelings. Look, we got a job to do, so let's get it over with. Like slugging telephone collectors? What do you know about that? Nothing, except that I was in the barbers on Wilshire yesterday. Skip it. How much do you get for a job like this? For a real good beating, we generally get a couple of yards. Hmm? Two hundred. But we're only supposed to give you a medium lucky. So we get a hundred and fifty. Oh, very reasonable. Suppose I give you two yards and we call the whole thing off. Oh, but we can't do that. Why not? Because it ain't ethical. Hmm? Suppose you hire a bricklayer to build you a chimney. And the man next door don't like you. And he hires him not to build you a chimney. You wouldn't like that, would you? No. You see? It's the same thing. We got a reputation. We fall down on a job. We don't get any more work. I see. Purely a matter of ethics. Natch. That's right. right. Of course. Okay, Slim, this is it. Come on, honey. You don't understand our business. Right now, we're over at Patty Paula's pool room on Santa Monica playing penny ante with Patty. Ain't that right? That's right, Swede. See, there ain't nothing personal in there. Oh, oh no. It Came as soon as I got your call. Where are they? Eight ball in the side pocket. Okay. You behind it, buddy. Say, what's the big idea? Who are you? One down. Let's go. No. Two and no count. Nothing personal in this, Percy. That was wonderful. I certainly feel better. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Now I want you to do me a really big favor. Sure, Johnny. Go out to the Winslow's. You remember we were there the other day? Yeah. And see if you can lift the three iron bears. But I already did that. Why can't you come along? Well, I've got some unfinished business to attend to. Otherwise, I'd go along with you. How did you find out where I live? From a friendly doorman at the Denton Freeman nightclub. Am I late? Oh, no. Only a day, that's all. 
That's what I was afraid of. Then put that plant back in the hall where you got it. Oh, oh. You idiot. I was forcibly detained. So I read in the newspaper. But now that we're together again, let nothing keep us apart. Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Oh, no. Must I? All right. Who's your fat friend? After eight hours, he has the nerve to call another dress for her. What does that mean? That you must go, and I must dress. Oh, but what about your dinner that I invited us to? I'll get a sandwich on the way. How about me? I'm sorry. You know, one could be very comfortable here. Thank you, I am. Lady, did you know you had ants in your plant? Wait, will you get out of here? What did you find out? In a minute. First, I want to know what you found out at the Winslow. Nothing. Oh, nothing. Didn't I send you out there to lift those iron bears? Well, did you lift them? Of course. How many did you lift? All of them, naturally. Two or three? Three, but the big one's pretty heavy. Now, just a minute. I want you to tell me the truth. When we were out there the other day, I saw myself that you were unable to lift one of the bears. Well, it must have been stuck in the ground or something. No, it wasn't stuck. How heavy would you say the bears were? Oh, uh, the baby one's about 100 pounds and the big one about 250. But there were three bears. That's what I told you. Yes, I know, but what I didn't tell you yesterday is that Winslow hired me to find one of the bears. What was the matter? Was he blind? No, he claims one of the bears was stolen. Well, it certainly wasn't stolen tonight. Oh, if only I could believe that you actually lifted three different bears. Johnny, I'm your pal, don't you believe me? Of course, I'm taking your word for it. That night I hear a newsboy shouting about a hit-and-run driver. And just as I'm about to invest in the information, I'm suddenly picked up by the law and taken right back where I come from. What is this, the Eagle Hotel? I want to talk to you, Fletcher. Oh, well, you can turn around and go right back where you came from, or I'm going to call the manager and have you thrown out. Take it easy, Johnny. You're going to carry those little jokes too far. Have you seen this? Winslow. He's been knocked off. Yeah, I can read. Hey, what time is it? One o'clock. Thinking of your alibi, huh? Where have you been? Remember that cute little redhead we met at the party? Well, she and I were went out. Save me the gory details. How was he killed? Paper says a hit and run driver. And what do you think? He was hit by a car, all right. Come on, Murdoch wants to talk to you. Oh, the TA. Oh. Do I have to go through all that again? As a matter of fact, you're in the clear on this. Winslow was killed at 7 o'clock. If my man's telling the truth, you were here at that time. Well, thank you for old Foxy. At least he's useful for something. If Winslow was killed at 7 o'clock, does the family know about it? Uh-uh. He wasn't identified until after 11. <laughs> it was a gold coin that finally did it. Oh, that 1822 half eagle. Yes. You better start thinking up some answers. How Winslow got the coin from you. When you were here the other day, you were thoroughly searched. But the coin was not found on your person. I'm not admitting anything. Yeah. But the coin could have been dropped in the pay slot of the telephone just before I was arrested. Madigan told me that. But it's ridiculous. Send in Mr. Garlow. That would mean that Winslow had hired a slugger to rob the telephone collector. Well? Mr. Garlow, Mr. Fletcher. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down, Fletcher. Thanks. Mr. Garlow works for the Treasury Department. I specialize in matters pertaining to the illegal possession of gold. Well, that's for my benefit. I haven't any. Some hoarders have conceived the brilliant idea of making a profit on the gold coin. They have it melted down, sold as old gold, or in a few instances as newly mined gold. Well, what do you do about that? The government has recently purchased quite a large amount of raw gold from a certain mine and smelter in Nevada. Nevada? Uh -huh. We have reasons to believe that this gold didn't actually come from the ground. At least not recently. But that his gold coins melted down and run into ingots. You think Winslow has something to do with it? Well, the evidence is still incomplete. Why are you telling me all this? Because of the $5 gold piece you were supposed to have found in a dead man's hand. Oh. Was your coin new? Yes. Then it could be the same one you found in Billy Tam's hand. Could be. That's all, Fletcher. We'll call you when we want you. Thank you. Gentlemen. 
After Johnny gets finished with the district attorney, he's got a bee in his bonnet. He tells me to locate the living quarters of the gents that worked him over. I go to work like a regular detective, satellite. I visit the bartender at Patty's pool room and get myself a lead. I wonder if Percy and Sweet really live here. They better live here or a certain guy won't get his china back. Where'd you get those teeth? From the bartender at the pool room. Why? I took them off him because I didn't trust him. What are we looking for? Something I hope we don't find. Then why are we looking? Because if we do find it, we're really out of luck. Let's go home. Now wait. No, it couldn't be. How do you like that? No imagination. Yeah, no imagination. They must have robbed the pinball game. Or a telephone company collector. No, it isn't there. What? It's not here. The five dollar gold coin. Gee, that's tough luck. Oh, no, it isn't. Because if it were here, we'd really be out of luck. How come? The police found the gold coin on Winslow last night. Say, that means he hired those guys to slug the collector and beat you up. Oh, Sam. Sam, I'm proud of you. Yeah, me too. But take those teeth back to the bartender. Come on. I'm going out to Beverly Hills. Hello, Mr. Fletcher. Miss Winslow, I'm sorry to intrude at this time, but as you know, your father hired me to investigate the disappearance of one of those bears. Yes, I know. Someone must have taken one away as a prank. They brought it back again last night. Thank you, anyway. I don't believe your father was killed accidentally. What makes you think that? Do you agree with me? Yes. If I could get to Nevada, I believe I could prove we're right. Why don't you go? It costs money. How soon could you leave? About immediately. Mr. Fletcher, you're on your way. The next thing I know, we're flying Class A to Las Vegas. Johnny, who is now in a big dough, says we're going to buy a classy car and drive out to the mine in style. Hey, there's that old uh, mysticist. What are you doing out here? You took the words right out of my mouth. Don't tell us you're going to bad act. As a matter of fact, I am. You think Billy Tam had another one of those 1822 $5 gold pieces? They're coins of my business. Can't just sit in the office and wait for them to come to you. I admire a man who goes after business. Look, we're going out to Bad Act. Why don't you come along with us and share expenses? Well, I sort of made arrangements with a guy, but... Well, why not? Good. Meet us over at the hotel in an hour. Bye. Right. like much. Well, it hasn't been worked in 21 years. Well, where's the mine? Over there. Wallow Winslow got all his dough out of this joint? Huh? And Billy Tam lived in that for 30 years? Why, it's worse than the Eagle Hotel in L.A. <laughs> Come on, get out. Well, looks like somebody's been here ahead of us. Probably the police. What do you expect? Oh. There's a food locker. You got beans and ketchup and tea and jam. Caviar for the general. <laughs> and here's his coin collection. Let me see it. <laughs> Indian pennies. Worth two dollars in any child's collection. Oh, get this. I'm a lonely widow, 46 years old. I do hope to hear from you soon. Your loving friend, uh, only belonged to one of those lonely hearts clubs. Poor fellow, that's perhaps the only pleasure he got out of life. Riding to love lawn women and collecting a few cheap coins. Say, hey, you had some correspondence with Pam. That's right. I don't see any letters from Winslow, you're out of it. You must have sent him his paycheck once a month. Hey, Winslow's been here. Huh? Over here in the stake. 
Walter Winslow. Walter Winslow, 4509 Hollywood Boulevard. Hey, that's not his address. <coughs> At least it's not his business address. What's the matter? You know that stuff you gave me? Yes, the caviar. The jam had a fishy taste. Oh. <laughs> well, these are no good. Nevertheless, we'll take them along. Let's have a look around outside. Yeah. Come on, gourmet. I'd sort of like to explore around the mine. You think it's safe? Oh, no, it's have to cave in when the shoring gets rotten. And it hasn't been worked in a good many years. Come on. Sam, you wait here. dark down here. Oh, I have a flashlight. You've come pretty well prepared. That's for you. Take a look down here. Hey, wait a minute. Lend me that light. Looks like somebody's been climbing around here. I think I got some. What is it? Somebody's pregnant. Gold coins. Five dollar gold coins. And all of them, 1822. 16. 19. And the one in Los Angeles makes 20. I'd better take those. Oh, no. Look, Fletcher, don't you think that? Are you looking for this? These coins are mine. I'm entitled to them. I've been suspicious of that hamper all along. I came all the way out here to find these. What did I? You had not the slightest suspicion they were in there. I came here to find gold coins, and I've got them. Take that light, and let's get out of here. You better take that lunch basket along, too. You'll need it. I've got a letter from Pam in which she tells how he discovered the coin. It was in the cave miles from here, and there was a skeleton and... Hey, what happened down there? Oh, nothing, except we found 19 more of those gold pieces. Jump for Joe Johnson. If you know of anything of history, why... You know that Bonneville's expedition passed somewhere around here in 1833. Quite possible the skeleton in the cave was that of one of Bonneville's men. What you say may very well be so. But how do you think that's going to help your case, Ennis? Well, Tam was my friend. He was also Winslow's friend, as well as his employee. I don't care what you say. The coins belong to me. Well, maybe you better write us a letter about it, because we're going back to town. You can't leave me here. I don't know why not. Sam! Yeah? Can we take him along? Yeah, bring him along. All right, but you better keep your mouth shut. Hello, Miss Winslow. I didn't think you'd bother coming here after what you did. I'm sorry about my part in it, but it couldn't be helped. It had to come out sometime. You never suspected. That father's been hoarding gold? Yes, I suspected, but I never discussed it with him. Here are some gold pieces that were found in the Three Bear Mine. Note the date. 1822 on every one of them. But that's the same date as that rare coin. Exactly. Theoretically, one of these is worth $15,000. But the price is determined by the coin remaining rare. If it were known that there were 20 of these in existence, the value would drop sharply. So I advise you to contact the dealer who will tell you how to feed them out judiciously. I feed them out? I'm sure they're, they're yours. They were found on your father's property. But you? What about me? What do you get out? Oh, that's right. I, I did have some expenses. Well, uh, the trip alone cost $15,000. 
$442. Then while I was away, the hotel rang up $507 on me, and I had to pay that. Then there's the $36 that I must send to the telephone company, and uh, that leaves, uh, let's see, I figured this out, uh, oh, $15. That's ridiculous. You've just given me a fortune. You're entitled to more than just your expenses. Sure. Thanks. Hello, Fletcher. What's the news? An address on Hollywood Boulevard was a mailing address. Also, we got the three iron bears. They were hollow. And there's enough gold dust in them to prove conclusively that they were the hiding places for Winslow's gold hoard. Although how you guessed that, I don't know. I didn't. He figured it out. I did? Yeah. How'd I do it? Remember when we went to that party and you were able to lift the two bears, but you couldn't lift the third one? But I told you it was stuck in the ground. No, it wasn't. It was full of gold. That's why you couldn't lift it. Of course I could lift it, even if it was filled with gold. No, no. Gold is one of the three heaviest metals known. Much heavier than iron. That little bear, full of gold, Weighed 900 pounds. Yeah. It was stolen. And then it was brought back empty. And that's why you were able to lift it, because the gold had been taken out of it. Oh. But who got it? Whoever murdered Walter Winslow and Billy Tan. Is that all for us? Yeah, that's all. Thanks for dropping in. Bye. I don't agree. I think Winslow killed Tam and then deliberately stepped in front of a car because he knew we were closing in on him. Same old place. Yeah. Sam! Hi, Eddie. Hi, Mr. Fletcher. Show you old pop. Oh, yeah. What do you want? A room and some snappy service. Yeah. You remember what I told you last week? $36.45. $36.45? Exactly. Well, there it is, Mr. Peabody. Coin of the realm. Count them and credit the balance to my account. What are you trying to pull, Fletcher? Why, nothing at all, Mr. Peabody. Nothing at all. You lock us out of our room for a few nickels, there they are. Uh, our key, 821, please. Eddie, the bag. Thank you. Home sweet home, and nothing changed. By request of the police department. Boy, I'm sure glad you're back. Well, I'm not. Same old bed. Yeah, but they changed the bed sprints. Hey, Eddie, I'd like to get the registration card for every person that was in this hotel the night of the murder. Can do? Can try. I'll keep it on deposit for you. Check. Wait a minute. While you're going downstairs, see if you get us another room. I keep remembering what that man said. Yeah, but the hotel's pretty full. Even a good look is back in 819. Janet Morgan? Yeah, she checked in the day before yesterday. Say, hey, Eddie, will you get us a... Hello there, 819. Janet! Johnny, welcome home. Hold everything. I'm coming right over. Hey, don't you realize it's a long way down there? Only eight stories. Hello, beautiful. Hello. Couldn't you stand it at the Beverly Palms? You have to come back here amongst us common people. How about yourself, taking trips to Nevada? How'd you know? Found the hotel. What were you doing out there? We were prospecting. I'm a gold digger. The Winslow mine? Mm -hmm. Come here, darling. Didn't you come back just to be with me? No, because I couldn't afford the other place. That isn't true. Ty, look at this. Who wrote it? I don't know. Where did you find it? Under the door. There'll be another 530 days if you forget what you saw. What did you see? Nothing. For $500? Look, you don't have to believe me. Look at it from my point of view. The money came at a crucial moment. I took it. Moved to the Beverly Palms and got the job with Denton Freeman. I thought you had that job before you moved. No, I moved there because I wanted to meet him. If it's any of your business. It isn't. But whoever it was must have thought you saw something. And be someone who's seen you before and expects to see you sometime. Why? The money. Too much for me. 
You'd better go. I've got to change. We're open tonight, you know. Am I invited? Love to have you. You've got me. Say, don't you ever go through doors? <laughs> Idiot. Later from the kid. Sam. Hey. Did you get him? Yeah. <laughs> and if Pickle Puss finds out I swipe these, I'll be king. They do, I'll get you a better job at the Barbers on Wilshire. He'll make $50 a day in tips alone. You think he could fix it? The taking here is only eight or nine, and then you got to strong arm the customers. James Reno, room 823. Checked in at 525, but the checking out time isn't marked. That's because he paid in advance. No luggage. Eddie, now, think hard. Do you remember James Reno? Yeah, think hard. I only remember him by the gratuities. And he gave me a dime. Oh, you mercenary dog. Yeah, you're a real mercenary. Well, crank up your skull and start thinking. Was he young or old? Well, he was sort of medium. Not too young, not too old. Not too thin and not too fat. Yeah, that's right. Eddie, what would you do for 20 bucks? I wouldn't murder anybody. Not anyone bigger than me. Well, we're safe there. Beautiful. Oh, you were great tonight. You really think so? Mm-hmm. Thanks. Your flaws are lovely. Break it up. Hey, what is this? What's going on? That's what I'd like to know. Relax, gentlemen. Sit down. Thank you for the use of the hall, Miss Morgan. I don't understand. Johnny's got a story he wants to tell. Well, this isn't the time or place. What? But I think you'll like it. Sit down. See, this one begins once upon a time. When the country went off the gold standard, Mr. Holderman, your brother-in-law hit a half a million dollars to stuff in the time of three iron bears on his lawn. Somebody worked out a neat stunt of gradually shifting the gold to a mine in Nevada, having a smeller down and sold to the Treasury Department as bullion. So that's the way he did it. Well, it was Walter's gold and he was under pressure. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do the smelting or the selling. It was the murderer of Walter Winslow and Billy Tam, a man by the name of James Reno. Who was James Reno? He used Billy Tam, bet him the gold and received the money at a secret address on Hollywood Boulevard. You see, Tam thought he was doing Winslow a service. He wasn't smart enough to detect a forged signature, particularly on a Winslow letterhead. Just what are you getting at? Billy Tam's trip to Los Angeles. You see, he found a coin which he believed to be valuable. So he wrote his friend Winslow that he was coming to town and would look him up. But this James Reno could not permit. Not if he'd been selling Winslow's gold or forging his signature. Exactly. He also said that he'd be staying at the Hotel Eagle and that he had a date with a rare coin dealer. I've already admitted that. But Reno intercepted him in his hotel forced him into our room and murdered him there, believing that the body wouldn't be discovered for days because we had been locked out of our room by a French key. Then how did he get into your room? Through Miss Morgan's room. So she's in on it. Of course. Gentlemen, are you insinuating that Miss Morgan could have loaned or rented her room to the killer for an evening? How could you? Oh, I didn't accuse her. Oh, but you did with your look. Well, I, I always looked like that. Well, that's very unfortunate. Why, anybody could have gotten through Miss Morgan's room. Sam and I did with a skeleton key. You would, because you're that type. But a man contemplating murder wouldn't dare take that chance. No? Well, James Reno did. He wrote Miss Morgan, threatened her, even sent her money. Miss Morgan, if you know who this man is, it's your duty to say so. But I, uh, I, I don't know. I told Johnny everything. I'll point him out. Very well. Foxy. Hmm? I didn't do it. Come in, Shorty. Eddie, take a look around and pick out the man who registered in the Hotel Eagle under the name of James Reno. Yeah, you know, Eddie, the guy who gave that enormous gratuity. Yeah, enormous. A dime. Hi. That's him, James Reno. Well, that's ridiculous. You can't prove it. That's possible. We arrested two men by the names of Sweden and Percy a while ago. They confessed that you hired them to rob a collector of the telephone company. We now know how that gold coin got into Walter Winslow's pocket. I think we've got a pretty good case. And I think this letter written to Miss Morgan will help. When your handwriting experts get finished with it, I think they'll indicate that Mr. Holderman is the author. All right, let's go. The broken down book peddler who knows the value of a dime. Yeah, look, I, 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 I
Oh, Johnny, I'm so happy for all of us. Well, I certainly talked us out of that one. You know, if it hadn't been for your letter, I might be wearing a different kind of a necktie now. <laughs> well, that's why I gave it to you. Thanks. Yes, sir. All on account of a French key. Where's Johnny now, and what's he doing? Where he is, I know. What he's doing, I can't say. That would be a bit surprised. Mm -hmm.